Hello everyone. My name is Anu Mande and I am the instructor for this section of History 113 World Civilizations since 1550. Welcome to class. This is a course about the history of the modern world, which is an interesting and ever evolving narrative that spans continents, centuries and culture. Now let's begin with the course title. Some of you are probably wondering why the World Civ course title includes the year 1550. Now this is really a matter of historical interpretation and perspective. 1550 is certainly not a universally agreed upon starting point and different historians may use alternative dates or periods as significant turning points. However, there are a few reasons why some historians argue that the modern world as we understand it today emerged around the year 1550. So let's briefly review some major developments of the early modern period. First, the Renaissance. It brought about significant advancements in European art, science and philosophy and challenged medieval traditions and emphasized humanism, individualism, and secularism. And around the same time, the Protestant Reformation, which was led by figures such as Martin Luther and John Calvin, sparked religious upheaval and challenged the dominance of the Catholic Church. And that had profound social and political consequences. Second, the voyages of Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama, and other sailors opened up new trade routes that connected different parts of the world and facilitated the exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures. And the resulting globalization had far-reaching effects, and that included the establishment of colonial empires, the spread of European ideas and the integration of different regions into a global network. Third, powerful rulers such as Henry VIII of England, Francis I in France and Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire, they centralized their authority, established bureaucratic institutions and solidified their territories. New concepts such as sovereignty, nationalism, and the nation-state system emerged. And these concepts also led to important shifts in political thought and the emergence of many of our modern ideas about governance, individual rights, and laid the groundwork for our current political systems, including uh, democratic principles and the protection of individual rights. Fourth, scholars such as Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler, they challenged prevailing religious beliefs and paved the way for a new understanding of the natural world based on the based on experimentation and mathematical principles and the scientific revolution marked a significant departure from religious explanations and that led to profound changes in scientific inquiry, knowledge production, and technological advancements. So, while 1550 may, seem, may be seen as a significant period uh, and as an important transition point to the modern world, Historical events are interconnected and different regions and cultures experience changes at different times. And so it's important to understand that the choice of 1550 as a starting point is a useful framework for understanding key developments, but it should not be seen as the only perspective on the history of the modern world. So now let's understand what events and transformations define the modern world. What changed and how is it different from the ancient and medieval periods? 
The history of the modern world is full of dramatic changes, revolutions, and remarkable achievements that have left an indelible mark on human civilization. And our aim in this course is to gain a deeper understanding of the significance of these historical turning points and their enduring influence on the present. So you'll see that the readings in the first couple of modules focus on the voyages of discovery, the transatlantic trade, the scientific revolution, and the Enlightenment. Now, the Enlightenment was a transformative period in which reason, science, and individual liberty emerged as guiding principles that laid the foundations for the modern world by challenging traditional authority, sparking revolutions, and fueling intellectual advancements that continue to shape our political, social, and cultural landscapes. Now, from there, we'll move on to the Industrial Revolution that brought about unprecedented technological advancements and societal transformations. We'll analyze the profound impact of industrialization on economic systems, labor conditions, urbanization, and global trade, as well as its consequences for class structures, the environment, and the nature of work itself. The 19th and 20th centuries witnessed events that reshaped the course of history. And we'll examine the rise and fall of colonial empires, the struggles for independence and decolonization, the devastating world wars, the Cold War and its aftermath, the quest for civil rights and gender equality, and the emergence of globalization as a defining force in our interconnected world. Now, throughout this course, the readings and assignments emphasize the interconnectedness of historical events and their enduring legacies. And I want to emphasize the importance of incorporating a few unique topics that highlight the invaluable contributions of historically marginalized actors and events from various regions across the globe. By exploring the experiences and achievements of marginalized historical figures from different parts of the world, we can gain a more comprehensive understanding of the interconnectedness and diversity of our collective history. So by the end of the course, you'll have tools for understanding how revolutions happen, why empires and nation states gain and lose power, and what it means for global connections to emerge. Now, in addition to building knowledge about world history, this course will also help you develop a foundation set of skills that all students need during their university years and beyond. And these skills include identifying reliable sources for research topics, writing well-researched papers, and engaging in group discussions. So I hope you'll enjoy the readings and assignments in this course. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. And I look forward to the stimulating discussions and insights that will emerge as we work together. Thank you.